What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today we're reviewing Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Teenage has proven to be a studio that can take aspects from the Souls-like genre while including their own spin in the overall product. Games like Neo 2 back in 2020 were regarded as impressive in combat and the punishing yet rewarding difficulty. Taking much of the influence from Sekiro rather than Dark Souls, generally people enjoy these games and I was excited to see if it matches expectations. Wolong Fallen Dynasty, following in the similar base of its predecessors, comes in time of the year that most gamers are itching for a killer game. Does Wolong Fallen Dynasty match the level of games like Sekiro and Niho? Is it worth buying? I give the good, the bad, and answer these questions in my final verdict. Overall, the gameplay of Wolong Fallen Dynasty is pretty solid. Don't get me wrong, I think there are some flaws with the combat system, but I felt that it had a good experience with it overall. You can tell they took a lot of concepts and are influenced by Sekiro due to the fact that parrying and timing your strikes are essential to victory in this game. The goal is to land strikes on your opponent to gather spirit energy, which can grant you power to land special attacks for spells. Each spirit attack will lower the stature of your enemy which can result in a critical hit. This seems like a mere copy of Sekiro's system, which at times, I was getting those flashbacks of the Guardian Ape, which still haunts my dreams. The good thing about the combat is it isn't complicated to use, and once you get the hang of the different combos you can land, it can get really fun. What I felt was the strongest aspect of the game was the skill tree included inside this combat system. There are five total elemental phases that change the stats of your character. Wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Each boosts specific stats, and each time you level them up, you gain access to new skill ability. Fire based attacks are more about attack strength and can literally blast people with flames like you're from Naruto. What's cool is that as you get to the higher level tiers, your character can turn into a straight up anime hero with what you can do. The other cool aspect of spells is facing against enemies that you need to be aware of what their elemental weaknesses can be. Meaning that if your enemy has a specific style that they like to use, for instance fire, then you need to learn how to use counter spells to make sure that they can block their attacks completely. This opens up the strategy for players to, to diversify how they play. It only makes the game more fun. I think surprisingly the bosses in this game were a lot better than what I first thought. It's really difficult to get near levels of the hype of Elden Ring bosses, but Wolong Fallen Dynasty gave us some pretty crazy moments when fighting enemies. Each territory or section has a major and minor bosses that you need to defeat in order to progress to the next stage. As you come across the bosses, they have been plagued by the darkness and are introduced to them in pretty badass ways. The bosses are pretty different, each with their strengths and weaknesses, which make them unique overall. I think the biggest aspect of the boss fights that are probably the most favorable is the fact that they mirror the level of difficulty that gets Souls fans happy. It's a level of intensity that can get you furious, making you want to falcon punch your television, but upon defeating the boss, gets you a euphoric bliss. Even facing off against the first boss in the game got me frustrated. Literally my guy is weak as hell and all of a sudden I'm facing a dude that has nearly infinite range when he reaches his level 2. I was sitting there in complete shock that they would have you hit someone this annoying right out the gate and when I finally won, it actually felt pretty damn good. The overall difficulty game can be challenging at times, but it doesn't seem to match Sekiro in its difficulty. You can see where Wolong gets its influence from, but it still doesn't reach the master class of difficulty of these types of games. One of the best aspects of Wolong Fallen Dynasty has to be its multiplayer. Similar to what we've seen in games like Niho, Monster Hunter, and Elden Ring, you're able to summon teammates to help you conquer parts of the game. I think this was done so well and worked seamlessly into the campaign. Playing games in co-op has been a lost aspect of gaming in the past few years, but I'm glad to see that they are continuing this feature in the Souls genre. Basically, before you start a mission, you can recruit players from the online to aid you in your quest or invite friends directly to your lobby. What's great about the game is that whichever member of your group is the furthest back in the story, you can return back to that level to help them catch up to you. You're able to complete the entire story together and progress at the same pace, which is definitely a great thing to see. They even took a page out of the Elden Ring playbook and have raids included in the game just to cause mayhem. In all honesty, this is one of the better multiplayer aspects compared to the games like Elden Ring, mainly because not only can your squad mates stay with you the entire mission, but inviting them to your lobby is 100 times easier compared to what Elden Ring's summoning system is. I understand that part of Elden Ring's story is to summon Tarnish to your side, but one of my criticisms of the game was how inconsistent it was to summon your allies. This method is easier and you can just link up and play with such ease. However, multiplayer still feels relatively easier compared to other Souls-like games because when you team up with a competent group of allies, you can run through the game entirely. The multiplayer made this game as fun as possible. Just because when you get the beat up on bosses together it just can't be overlooked with the good we have to talk about the bad one of the weaker aspects of wolong fallen dynasty has to be the customization and loot system the past few teen ninja games the loot system has been something of a bore 
and never feels like I can get excited to try out new weapons. There's roughly 68 weapon variants in this game that you can find and use, which seems utterly minimal compared to other Souls-like games like Elden Rings 309. I know it seems tough for me to make a comparison of the game of the year, but to give you a sense of the scale in which these games expand the level of weapon variety is a big deal. The issue I find with this game's loot system is that all weapons seem relatively the same in the way they combat enemies and don't really have a special component that makes you feel like you're using a legendary weapon. There's nothing wrong with not having many weapon variants. Secure only had one weapon the entire game, but the abilities you have when using your prosthetic make the way you combat differently which helps the experience overall. Elder Ring has special abilities with every weapon variant, which makes it feel unique and gives you a reason to try new playstyles. The problem with not having many variants means that there's less diversity in how you fight enemies. Each category swings and attacks the same way. It just feels bland. Unfortunately, Wolong Fallen Dynasty has the issue where they make the weapons feel not worth grinding for, which is just a shame. One of the other aspects I wasn't a fan of, which honestly might be against popular opinion, is the map design. I don't mind the more linear design of maps similar to the old days, but the problem with this game isn't necessarily that the maps are bad, but there isn't much to explore to make it feel full. Don't get me wrong, the art design of the map itself really does look good, but it feels like they aren't really telling a story with their maps. When the narrative doesn't provide the details of a story, it's up to the map to fill in the blanks or at least build intrigue into what's going on. The set pieces were interesting with battlefields that are war-torn with multiple different environments, but it just feels like layers of enemies that were not diverse enough to get me interested to a high level. It doesn't need to be an open world to be able to expand upon the lore of the game. There have been many games that have been linear based and the map itself told a story that made people intrigued to explore. It feels like overall there are areas of the level design that are lacking which is disappointing since there are areas that do well, but it doesn't live up to expectation. By far the worst aspect of the game has been the story. i never been so confused when playing a game until I played Wolong Fallen Dynasty. The only coherency of a story we have is when we are given the prologue before the game officially begins. Essentially the game takes place during the fall of the Han Dynasty where you take control of a nameless warrior who gets swept into a power struggle between warring kingdoms and the pursuit for the elixir of immortality. Each level you face off against different enemies that are corrupted by the elixir in their path for strength. The basic idea of the story makes sense but the characters and the reason for each action doesn't make sense at all. Every character you meet in the start level is legit easily forgotten by the time you reach the next stage. There's no distinct traits between them and we literally are not given any reason to care about who they are or what their goals are for the story. i never seen a game that made it where every character I met in a game was either unlikable or too bland for me to care. What's worse is that basically throw you into a conflict with little to no explanation but what is the overall plan of the group? And I played some really bad story games. Halo 5 literally made me disgusted to a high degree because of its lack of character design and vague story. But somehow as I continued to play Wolong Fallen Dynasty, I was considering this is the most confusing story of all that I have experienced. Overall, Wolong Fallen Dynasty has both positives and negatives. The gameplay component of the game really does excel all expectations and Team Ninja did a great job developing a Souls-like game with its own flavor. The multiplayer and epic boss fights are easily the best parts of the game and it's so much fun to jump into co-op. The level design is mixed with some great landscapes but not appealing enough for me to explore. There aren't enough variety with the weapons and the loot system still struggles similarly to Niho 2. And the story is possibly the most confusing aspect of the game with mainly unlikable characters making it feel bland. Overall, I'm giving Wolong Fallen Dynasty a 7.8 out of 10. They clearly show how Niho 2 and Sekiro have a lot of influence on this title, but it does not match their level as an overall game. They had some good aspects, but they have been better iterations that seem more complete. I do think this game is worth the purchase if you're looking to play with friends. It is currently available on Game Pass, which seems about right, giving you the chance to try it if you have the Game Pass subscription. My hopes are that they make some expansions of the game because I do feel that there are some good aspects, but I feel like they would need more for me to jump back into it. Only time will tell, but overall, a solid experience. What do you think about Wolong Fallen Dynasty? Drop your opinion in the comments below. If you like game reviews, opinion pieces, and roundtable discussions, hit that subscribe button to join up with the crew. Join us on Twitch, we stream at least three days a week, and that is located in the description below. You can also find our socials also located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman, signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>